Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday service. As you may have noticed last week, I recorded and put together the service before we heard the sad news of the death of the Duke of Edinburgh. And so, though in our buildings we were able to adapt, on this particular service it just went out as was. So my apologies for that. But this weekend we particularly remember all of his family as they have gathered and the nation has mourned together. We particularly keep in our prayers the Queen, who, although the funeral is done, will now be, as many will recognise, adjusting to a new life without her partner of 73 years. And so let's take a moment now to keep her and the family and our nation who are grieving all sorts of things as well as the death of someone who was a great model for service and generosity. Let's keep us all in prayer for a moment now. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us in and through the life of Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We give you thanks for his long and full life, for his strength of character, and for his devotion and service to family, nation and commonwealth. We praise you for his generosity, the many contributions he made to our national life, and the encouragement he gave to so many, especially to the young. And we hold all those who grieve up to you, O Lord, particularly our Queen Elizabeth and her family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen.
We're going to be picking up from last week with the readings about Doubting Thomas and hearing from Reverend Canon Kate Edmonds about doubt. For the next two weeks, we will be hearing the diocesan sermon that's provided with next week's coming from our own Archdeacon Douglas. It gives us a different flavour and allows me to go away for a week without having to chase anyone for a sermon. But we are glad to be still joining together in this way as well as in buildings as we gently and tentatively uh, take a step out into in-person gatherings again. We plan to in some way keep up this online provision for those who can't come back to buildings at all or those who are wanting to change the rhythm of their worship. You are all welcome. We are all part of one body even though we are separated. And so we join together this morning in prayer. Ever present God, set your blessing on us as we begin each day. Confirm in us the truth by which we rightly live. Confront us with the truth from which we wrongly turn. We ask not for what we want, but for what you know we need, as we offer this day and ourselves for you and to you. We continue in prayer with the collect for this Sunday. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you in continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we say together, O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. And so we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for forgiveness and peace. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So having received God's forgiveness, we offer our thanksgiving with a prayer of praise, as we say together. We thank you, O God, for you are gracious. You have loved us from the beginning of time, and you remember us in times of trouble and of joy. We thank you, O God, for you came to us in Jesus Christ, who has redeemed the world and saves us from our sins. We thank you, O God, for you have sent your Holy Spirit, who comforts us and leads us into all truth. Your mercy endures forever. Today's reading is taken from 1 John chapter 1 verse 2 and 1 John chapter 2 verse 2. The life appeared, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God.
is from John chapter 20, starting to read at verse 10. Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she, that he had said these things to her. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. When the other disciples told him that they had seen the Lord, he declared, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I remember taking the first service in church after the first lockdown and looking at the congregation in a small village church spaced out behind masks and with no singing was a rather sad sight. As I gazed at the masked throng, in my welcome, I joked that they all looked like a crowd of bank robbers. The joke, I think, was to ease myself as well as them, as I really couldn't believe what I was seeing. Seeing is believing. And that, of course, brings us to Thomas, 
who we're thinking about in our readings today. I have to say I've always felt a bit sorry for Thomas. We aren't sure why he wasn't in the upper room with the other disciples. And after the amazing events of those last few days, it's understandable that he was confused. I was sent cheekily a cartoon recently, which portrayed Thomas holding a placard. The placard said, all I'm saying is, why don't we call Peter denying Peter? Or Mark, runaway naked Mark, if that's not the case. So why should I be saddled with this title? It's a good question. And then there was the response from his friends, which was, I think you should move on now. The point is, we continue to refer to St Thomas as Doubting Thomas. Is it because it's a natural hook to remember him by, or is it because we can relate to his doubting? Fritz Wenst, a Lutheran pastor and psychotherapist, writing in his paper, The Politics of Doubting Thomas, commented that real faith knows and embraces doubt and questioning, rather than locking ourselves in as the disciples first did, we should learn from the curiosity of Thomas. The opposite of faith is not doubt but fear, and it's a time to shed our fears. Hmm. The curiosity of Thomas. He wanted to know more. He wanted proof. And we read in the Gospels that he said, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my fingers in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. In his own mind, he was struggling. Was Jesus dead or had he risen? You could just imagine the cogs of his mind whirring. Thomas would have thought, we saw him die horribly on the cross. We saw him buried in the stone rolled there. Then we heard tales of his body being moved. And then Mary Magdalene came announcing that she had seen the Lord. And now the rest of them saying that he had appeared to them. Are they all mistaken? Did he then think, I need proof. I'm in two minds. I need to find out for myself. How like many of us, we live in a scientific age where explanations for events that happen are frequently called for, if not demanded. As we progress through this pandemic, there are still arguments about the exact origin of the virus. Proof is needed that it came from bats or escaped from a laboratory, and the debate goes on. Was Thomas's debate then in his mind between the humanity of Christ and the divinity of Christ? Was he questioning what Jesus had taught them now that he wasn't with them? Of course, this doubt was put to rest when Jesus appeared and showed his wounds to Thomas, who then touched them and believed. But how can this be called faith? We have a definition of faith in Hebrews 11, starting the first verse. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. But Thomas did not believe until after he had seen the risen Christ. So how is this faith when he had already been taught by Jesus and seen him do amazing things? St Thomas Aquinas, following St Augustine, offers a most ingenious explanation of this verse. St Thomas, the apostle, saw one thing but believed another. He saw the humanity of Christ, but believed in his divinity. He saw that Christ had risen from the dead as a man, but believed in his eternity as God. Of course, Thomas cries out, my Lord and my God, affirming loudly his faith that Christ is human and divine. And in fact, he was the first to do so out loud. Jesus, however, challenges him and perhaps the rest of the disciples gathered there. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. 
all of those gathered there were witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, his return to life and being amongst them. What if they hadn't witnessed this? Would they have believed or would they too have been doubters and labelled as such? What about us? Do we need to see to believe? I began by noting that seeing people masked and socially distanced in church and enduring lockdowns has made us really believe in the devastation of a virus. 18 months or so ago, we, I am sure, would not have believed it. But now having experienced it, we do. So what about our faith? The concluding verses of chapter 20 set for today states the purpose of this gospel according to John. These are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. If we have doubts, I believe that's good. We need to question because working through our questions with the help of the Holy Spirit, our faith becomes stronger. If we push through the pain barrier, which doubts can cause, we reach that peace, a peace which passes all understanding. And we bask in the love of God, brought to us by the life, death and resurrection of Christ. Low Sunday it may be, but reminding ourselves of the doubts which Thomas had, but nevertheless he came to believe, and in his unshakable faith in the divinity of Christ, he has given a lasting testimony, which has served to be the foundation of the faith of countless generations of believers, who, imitating this great gospel apostle, have cried out, My Lord and my God! On Easter Day, we shouted, Alleluia, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Today, may we shout, my Lord and my God. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Father, we are all sinners, and yet you love us and want us to love each other. Help us as we try to forgive each other and to root out those attitudes which are not helpful. You know all about us. We cannot hide from you. Help us to learn to walk in the light and to be forbearing with one another. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. As we slowly and carefully come out of lockdown, give us a new appreciation of all that is around us. From the beauty of the wild flowers adorning our hedgerows, to the laughter of friends meeting again after a long interval, give us joy and delight in our new freedoms. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for our mission community that as Easter people we will be renewed. Give us fresh ideas and new vigour so that during this time of transition we will be able to meet people's physical needs through the food bank and their spiritual needs through worship and prayer together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of the world. 
we bring before you the situation in Myanmar where there's oppression and brutality. We thank you for the rollout of the vaccines and pray that they will be made available to those most in need in the poorer countries of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of national mourning, we pray for the Queen and the Royal Family. Be close to them and give them comfort, we pray. Be with all who mourn the loss of a loved one. Let us support and encourage one another in the knowledge that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. During our prayers together, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we bring our time of worship together to a close in prayer. Great God, you are one God, and you bring together what is scattered and mend what is broken. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>